Hello and welcome to this tutorial on IP version 6 migration methods. So we know that IP version 4 and IP version 6 are not compatible. And everyone is going to be using IP version 6 very soon. So we'll need to prepare networks to support both versions because this transition from 4 to 6 is not going to happen overnight. And in fact, we'll end up having to support both versions for many years. So we're going to take a look at a few of the different approaches we can take in order to make that migration. We'll begin with something known as dual stack, and that's where we support both versions at the same time. And then we'll move on to something known as tunneling, and we've covered this before in, in other areas, but here we'll see how we can put IP version 6 packets into IP version 4 in order to get across parts of our network. And then finally, we'll look at something known as NATPT. So we're NATing, but in this sense, we're going to do it on the protocol level, and we'll be swapping out the headers between version 4 and version 6. Okay, let's start with the dual stack approach, and this is widely considered to be the best method to take. Why is that? Well, we're going to run both IP version 4 and IP version 6 at the same time. So no matter which type of protocol we see, we can support it natively. So the hosts on our network are going to have IP version 4 and IP version 6 addresses. And likewise, our routers are not only going to have addresses from both protocols, but they're going to have IP version 4 and 6 route tables and IP routing protocols to support both version 4 and version 6. So here, quite simply, our host has an IP version 6 address and an IP version 4 address. The router is going to have the same thing. So this is called the dual stack approach because you're, you're running both protocol stacks, the IP version 4 stack and the version 6 stack. Okay, so that's the first method. Okay, the second approach is tunneling. And quite simply, if we have IP version 6 hosts only, and they have to communicate over a network that only supports IP version 4, then we have to tunnel that traffic, that IP version 6 traffic. So here's how we do it. A, a host is going to source an IP version 6 packet. And when the router gets it, it's going to realize that the network segment to the destination is IP version 4 only. So a tunnel is set up where the IP version 6 packet is going to have IP version 4 headers on there. So we're encapsulating, and that's our tunnel. That way we can send this IP version 4 packet, which has the version 6 inside of it, hidden away, across the network to the other router. And then that router is going to go ahead and take that IP version 4 header off and then deliver the original IP version 6 packet to the destination. Now this is commonly called a 6 to 4 tunnel because we're putting IP version 6 inside a uh, IP version 4 tunnel. There are other tunnels as well you'll come across. Uh, Isotap, Teredo, MCT. Um, these are just different variations on, on types of tunnels and, and how they're set up. But the process is generally the same in all of them where we put the IP version 6 inside the IP version 4. Okay, so this method is good if your entire network uh, cannot support a dual stack approach. Now our last method is known as NATPT. So we're NATing a protocol. In other words, IP version 4 to version 6 or in the other direction, IP version 6 to IP version 4. Now this method is commonly used when you have hosts that just cannot communicate. In other words, they do not both support uh, a common protocol. So here in our diagram, one PC only supports version 4 and the other one only supports version 6. So the router in between them is going to have to perform the protocol translation. So what will happen is the IP version 6 host, for example, can send a packet to the router. The router will go ahead and it will change the IP headers from a version 6 to a version 4 and then deliver it to the IP version 4 host. That way the IP version 4 host receives a packet that it can make sense of because it supports that protocol. And then the same would be true in the reverse direction. The IP version 4 host could source a packet and the router would then translate that packet into IP version 6 so that the destination can understand it.
There are several different flavors of uh, NAT PT. There's a static approach, a dynamic approach. We can also even use a PAT approach, if you remember that from our original NAT discussions. Okay, so we have some options here, but the, the main point to take away is if you have two hosts that don't support a common protocol, NAT PT is one method we could use. Okay, so to summarize what we covered, we now know about the dual stack approach. And here, every device on the network will support both IP version 4 and IP version 6 natively. So they're running both of those at the same time. So if they receive a packet from either protocol, they can support it without a problem. Now, if all of your devices on the network cannot support both protocols, you might want to set up something like a tunnel. And here, this is used when your endpoints cannot support the same protocol as the network. So we looked at an instance where uh, the endpoints were running IP version 6, but the network was IP version 4. So we set up a tunnel across the IP version 4 network, and we put those IP version 6 packets inside a version 4 header, and that way we can use the version 4 network to get version 6 packets from a source to a destination. Now the other approach is using NAT, and here we're translating IP headers. So if you have two endpoints that don't support a common protocol, this might be a solution to get them to talk. And quite simply, a router in between them will swap out the IP version 4 or IP version 6 headers so that the destination receives a, an IP protocol packet that it can actually understand and process. Okay, so that's it. Those are the IP version 6 migration methods. I would suggest being able to identify what approach you would use in a given situation. Okay, thanks for watching.